Hey, mamas and friends, it's Sarah again. Today is another day for our book chats. So grab your books or turn on that part of your brain that remembers what you've been reading. I'm going to plunge my coffee. <laughs> Get your coffee ready. <clears throat> and let's talk about what you've been reading. So does anybody have a hard time getting reading done like I do? <laughs> I bet so. <laughs> I feel like I'm always reading to my kids or about how to read to my kids or what to read to my kids and so on. So I don't normally get to do a lot of my own reading. In fact, last week, three of the books that I showed you all had to do with homeschool. Two of them were tutor reads, and one of them is an ongoing read. That's teaching the trivium. I didn't get through that book. I think it's uh, one of those reads where you have to go slow, and I like to take notes and see how it applies to you and find what nuggets you need for that season of your life of homeschooling and whatever. So I didn't get through that. But today we finished To Kill a Mockingbird. Um, I think my kids enjoyed it. I enjoyed it. It was it was nice to revisit it. It was nice to have good talks about it. And I also finished uh, Taming of the Shrew, which I already told you about. So yay, I got two of my reads done. And the other one, I've read a chapter in it. And I think that's good for that. So that is going to be an ongoing book. Today, what I wanted to share with you is some of the books that my kids like and that we've liked as a family. And a lot of my book chats will be about those kind of books. And I also wanted to mention um, a booktuber. These are people on YouTube who talk about books. That's what they do. That's their job. That's their channel. Um, who, who I, my children and I have been following, who just passed away. And her name is Angela. And her channel on YouTube is Coffee and Chapters. So you might want to go check her out. Hopefully they keep her channel alive. She focuses mostly on young adult novels and uh, storybook, uh, yeah, story fairy tale retellings and things like that. <clears throat> but she was an extraordinary lady on her channel. And I've actually got to converse with her through emails. And she's very compassionate and very kind and not, uh, she does not compromise. If a book didn't meet her standards, she just told you flat out, this did not meet my standards for this reason, this reason, or this reason. And usually the only reason she would DNF or did not finish a book was because it conflicted with her heart for Christ in it. So she was a Christian booktuber and I hope you guys check out her channel, even though she's gone. Um, and some of the books, a lot of the books that I've been reading in the last couple of years have been recommendations of hers and one of them is today. And I don't have the book here because we actually listened to it on Audible, but I'll post it on uh, the Late Night Coffee Moms page so you guys can find it. And it was called The Goose Girl by Shannon Hale. Now, again, these are young adult novels. So young adult novels, I would say depending on the maturity of your child and whether or not you're going to listen to it or read it with them, are geared for teenagers, I guess 14 to probably 21, I would guess 23 maybe. I like them because especially the Christian ones or the story storybook re, fairy tale retellings, um, they're not dark as in like in your face interview with a vampire, <laughs> dark. Um, and they're, especially if they're Christ-centered, they're not smutty and the language is usually a lot less um in your face now i have read some ya some worldly ya and it is that's young adult fiction and it <clears throat> from what i understand most of the authors who write worldly ya are required to put certain topics in and are even required to put certain language in like you had to curse a certain amount of times in order to have your book published that's just from the people I know. That's probably not everybody, but uh, the research that I've done on that. So be careful if you're going in the YA section. But The Goose Girl by Shannon Hill. I do not know Shannon Hill's faith. It's not an overtly Christian book, 
but it's a retelling of the goose girl and my daughter one of her nicknames her father's given her is his goose girl so we read that together and it was a really good story we listened to it snuggled in a tent in our spare room it was a, it kept my attention it kept my daughter's attention it kept my son's attention but it did have some issues that happen in it that you might want to watch out for if you have animal lovers like I do <laughs> and I had no idea I had never read a goose girl fairy tale before so I had no idea this was in there and uh, yeah there's a beloved pet is I don't know how to word it is murdered basically but it's a very good book and it's part of a series of books and the next one is called a uh, ooh in a burning and we're just starting that one it's they're really neat books so the goose girls the first one and my daughter wanted me to share that one with you today that was her request share the goose girl by Shannon Hill and that was a, a recommendation of Angela from coffee and chapters on YouTube then my son wanted me to show you this book the green ember by SD Smith <clears throat> a lot of homeschooling families I know have already <laughs> discovered this book probably through Sarah McKenzie and her podcasts about read alouds and stuff um, that's how we found him years and years and years ago and we loved the green ember we I remember when we listened to it my husband was away at a deacons meeting we were snuggled up in the living room just lounging around I think one of my kids was coloring one of them was playing with Legos I laid on the couch and there was a free you could get the first hour of the green ember audiobook downloaded for free so I'm like well why not why don't we just try it oh my goodness in that first hour in it on a cliffhanger of course it would smart marketing and we had to scoop it up <clears throat> we got it we loved it it's still one of our favorites we're still following the journey because the journey is still going on there's the green ember series which is like the green ember uh there's lots more don't there's lots more and he's working on more but he also has little tiny mini uh, what would you call them novellas or short stories that follow the history that you don't get in the green ember of these rabbits he, he calls them rabbits with swords because that's what it's about rabbits with swords imagine uh, I don't know like a Lord of the Ring esque rabbit adventure <clears throat> but a lot less dark but still just as exciting and fun and that's the green ember i would love for you to check this out st smith is a really cool guy i got to meet him this last year he's he's very encouraging especially to um teenagers or young people who want to write he is compassionate with his wording but he is frank in how to fulfill that part of their dream and he doesn't mock them he he encourages them along whatever dream it is God has put into their heart he's a really cool guy please check out the green ember it's awesome again any link I add is probably just going to my Amazon affiliate account I get like pennies if you click on that and buy it through my link but I'm not hooked up with SD Smith or Shannon Hale or obviously Angela from coffee and chapters I'm just telling you what we like so have any of you guys read Green Ember? And do you guys like it? I don't know anybody who hasn't really liked it. And so that leads, brings me to my last family book. <clears throat> this book, when we moved into our house that we're living in now, um, my kids were, I think, six, five and two, or six and three. I get mixed up there because they changed. They went up a year shortly after we moved in. And we used to go to the library, not as often as we probably should have, but we liked to go. And there's this one audiobook that was a white, oh, Jessie says she loves the Green Ember. Yeah, we love it. It was a white clam, clam what is, it, is it called a clamshell case? That's what they used to call it at Blockbuster Video. <laughs> For the VHS <laughs> fat cases. Anyway, <clears throat> it was an audiobook. And on this audiobook cover was just this simplistic white, uh, white and black drawn house 
with a red door and that's it. And I remember going to the library for weeks and weeks and weeks. And every week I would pick up this audiobook and look at it. And I'd read the back of it and I'd be like, ah, I don't think so. And I'd put it down. But it drew my eye every single time. So finally we picked it up. We came home, had a, our lunch or a snack or something. Excuse me, got the hiccups. It's because I need more coffee. Yeah had our snacks or whatever, then literally ran to the back of my house because my littlest one was tired, ready for a nap. My oldest one was too, but he wasn't going to go down. And we jumped on my bed, pulled out <laughs> the huge CD boom box and started this book. And we did not leave the room until it was finished. And I do not think any of us, even the littlest one slept because we loved it so much. Now the very beginning of this book, I was like, can, I was really confused. I couldn't tell who the antagonist or the protagonist were, who the good guy was or who the bad guy was. If this was a whole joke, if it was mocking, I couldn't, I didn't understand it. But the farther we went into it, the more we've loved it. And it's become part of my, our family's culture. You will catch us listening to this when we don't feel well. You'll catch us listening to this when we're on vacation, taking long drives. If we can't think of anything else to listen to, this is what comes out. We have inside jokes. We quote this to each other. It's probably one of our family culture books. And that is The Willoughby's by Lois Lowry. See the little one? Isn't it just an intriguing cover? Passing it every day, you know? So that's the cover I fell in love with, this, this little red door. And it's read by Artie Johnson, and he's a hilarious narrator. And this little tiny book, see, it's not big at all. You could read this in just a few hours with your children. <clears throat> is snarky and sarcastic. And all qualities you want your children to be, right? <laughs> but it's fun. It's just fun. And if you know Lois Lowry, she wrote The Giver, Deep, Dark, book. She wrote Number of the Stars about the Holocaust. She wrote another book called Gossamer about child abuse. I cannot even fathom how this writer has so many different layers to the stories that she can write. And this book is, there's a depth to it, but its surface is lighthearted and funny and just humorous. This is one of the only fiction books too, by the way, that I've ever found that has a bibliography because they talk about books all the time. It weaves really well into our homeschooling because my children could spot, oh, I read that book. Oh, I haven't read that book. Well, the kids in the book read the book, so I wanna read that book now. And we, we've done that. We've done a Willoughby Readathon kind of book thing. It has a bibliography and it also has a glossary. This glossary is hilarious. If you do not, if you pick up this book and you read it, and you like the story and it's like, oh yeah, that was fun. And you skip <laughs> the glossary or the bibliography, you miss out. It's almost like an inside joke for people who love to read because it's hilarious. <laughs> In fact, my son is considering using the glossary for an event he has coming up in school because it's so familiar and so funny and we love it. So that's my three books of the week. It's Shannon Hale's Goose Girl, which I'll post on Late Night Copy Moms. It's The Green Ember by S.C. Smith. And it's The Willoughby's by Lois Lowry. And this one, I would tell you, snag the audio. He's hilarious. He has great comic timing that I'm not sure would have touched my children and my hearts the same way if I had just read it myself. It's hilarious. You got to check it out. All right. So that's it for today. What are you guys reading? What books do you like? Which books have formed your family's cultures or your family's inside jokes? Maybe it wasn't a book. We have quite a few movies that have done the same for me. I know my sister and I have, we could probably talk in movie quotes because that was our family culture and part of who we are as a family. Do you guys have anything like that? Movies, books, songs? That's part of your family culture that might not make sense to anybody else. But one of the reasons I love homeschooling as much as I do is 
you have time to create that family culture and to nurture it. Just like I said with uh, the Willoughby's. Let's see, let me, the nefariously written and ignominious, ugh, ignominiously illustrated by the author. <laughs> it's a crazy book. Um, is that you have time to love that culture and nurture it, just like with the Willoughby book. We were able to go through the bibliography and read it. Read the books in the bibliography or listen to those on audio on like LibriVox.org for free. It was awesome because here you are with a book list that your kids actually want to read. Just because characters in a book read it and it's not from your book list. It was great. So leave your favorites, pin away, uh, show me what you like on the comments or bring your books next week. Next week, I'll bring a couple more family favorites, probably, um, because like I said, I don't have a whole lot of free time just for my own reading pleasure, but I am determined to find at least one book for me to read this month that's just fun for me. So, I guess I'll catch you next time. See you tomorrow. Bye.